Hey guys, let's move on to our next topic for our advanced certification preparation. The next topic is invoke methods. Okay, in invoke methods, I'm going to give you five different scenario based examples. So do not hurry, go through this entire video so that any question that comes on invoke method, you should be able to answer it. So let's get started. Okay, so invoke method. First of all, let me show you one question, then I will go through the examples which I have prepared for you. So read this question. A developer is modifying a workflow on which uh, a workflow which contains several invoke method activities. Okay. What is an attribute of invoke method activity? So it is very simple answer actually. So if you go here, you can see invoke method has got target type target object method name these are the three attributes now if you go back to the question this is a pretty simple you will not get this question for sure you will get something else so for however let's answer this to answer this what is the execute and either target type or target ob object executes on either a target type or a target object so this is a right answer because in invoke uh, method either you can go for a target type or a target object any one okay i will show you that executes multiple vv.net statement this is incorrect right so this is incorrect so what i said when you get optional based question which are the wrong ones you should be able to remove it okay so that you will be pretty sure the answer you are selecting is the right one so this is wrong execute synchronously on a specified workflow no this is not a parallel activity uh, executes a dot xml file um, input argument dot xml file means invoke workflow right you will use a invoke workflow so this is also not wrong uh, i mean this is also wrong so what is the right answer this is your right answer okay so you got this now let's move on to the real uh, practical uh, scenario based uh, examples okay this is re required for you now look at this let's go very slow okay so first what I have done, I have taken a build data table activity and here I am simply writing, I have removed all the columns and I have made both the string string and I have given a name called ID and written name. Okay, both are string type. Here I have given a value for the ID 1 and for the name I have given Rakesh. Okay. Now everything is getting stored in the variable, which variable? DT1. Remember this, the first one is getting stored in the DT1, which has Rakesh, my name. Okay. Let's go to the build data table 2. Let's open this. Here what I have done, I have written the ID, same format. No change. String, string, name, ID, all same format you have to keep. Okay. So do this on your UAPA studio. Here I have given 2 and here I, I have written Mohan and clicked on OK. So here this data is getting stored in which variable? DT2 variable. So you should be able to look at the image and should be able to understand. Okay. Remember DT1, DT2. Next I am using a invoke method activity here what i am doing in the target object so anytime you are storing let's say dt1 data dt2 let's say you want to merge them merge means what let's say dt1 is there below that you would like to add the next next values so you want to make it one data table that is merging right one below the other so here what i am saying i am writing a merge now you have a question rakesh what is this do i need to remember merge this that how do i know from where do you did you get it merge how did you get to know that you have to write the method name as merge i will show you many people have that question let me first clarify that now for that all you do simply type this is a data table variable we are dealing with right so simply write data table class it's a class data table class microsoft and hit on enter you will get the very first link okay data table class system dot so just open this okay so likewise any class that you will be dealing with let's say data table let's say i want to deal with uh, console let's say i would like to deal with uh, zip file so for everything there is a class and that class i need to open in microsoft docs so once you open this scroll down okay look at go down go down 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 here somewhere you would find something called a table called methods okay so from here i am getting it to know for me to a merge two data tables what method i should use so i should look at this table scroll down 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 and there should be somewhere called merge do you see merge merge if you type merge what this does merge the specified data table with the current data table so it is merging two data tables so i am using this method merge so here in the studio i am writing merge getting it okay 
this is the method you got to know so how do you really configure the target object so what i am doing the target object is dt1 that means rakesh where my first name is the rakesh right so here i am keeping the dt1 then how do i pass the dt2 for that go to the property and in the property there is something called parameters click on this okay click on the parameter here when you click on this you no know, it will automatically create something like this and here you, you just have to enter the another value you would like to add with that data, data table right let me delete this extra thing that i have added just now uh delete let me cancel it okay so what i am doing in, here in data table and i'm passing dt2 okay you might get similar kind of a um, images and it will ask what would be the output so what would be the output of this tell me first so what i am doing with dt1 i am passing the dt2 dt1 is there i am passing the dt2 as a parameter so what would happen under dt1 dt2 will get merged right that is the meaning so here i am doing a object out, uh, output data table so here uh, the output of this merge will store in dt1 or dt2 variable because target object is dt1 under dt1 the dt2 will get added so the output will be stored in dt1 remember this okay now here output data table i am converting that to a text variable called output i am passing dt1 because target object is dt1 in, tar in that target it is going to hit the dt2 target right target is going to hit the dt2 so dt1 be become a big one now including the data of dt1 and dt2 so here i'm passing the dt1 and storing it to a text variable called output and i'm seeing the value so what would be the output of this if i ask you if this is a question what is the answer so it will say one rakesh and then two mohan or it will say two mohan and then one rakesh how the output would come okay because your target element is dt1 so dt1 will remain on the top the values would remain on the top and below that the next two and mohan will come so let me run it getting it right you need to understand and practically do this okay do not go to exam without practically you trying all this on your yapa studio okay your practical understanding is required all right so i have executed let's see the output so you can see id name first data table was one in one rakesh and second one was two mohan so on the dt1 it has added the dt2 below that getting it this is the output what will what will happen if you do the reverse let's say i am writing dt2 here and uh, passing the parameter as dt1 experiment and comment me the output in the, uh, under the video comment it yeah, this should be the output okay so okay if you have got the understanding you will be able to let me know the output done let's move on to our second example okay in the second example what i am doing i am using a list okay so before using any target class let's say it's a list right list type so if you see the list variable what i did i went to the variable panel created a list variable and here i have selected the list integer type and how do you initiate a list to look at the how i have written new list of int 32 all this how do you initialize a dictionary how do you initialize a list array all of the things should be pretty clear before you get into the exam so look at this example here you get to know how i am creating a list so you, how, what are the values there in the list 1 2 3 okay let's say i would like to add some new value to the list so which method i should use let's say i do not know i don't know how what is the method name or i forgot the method name so what i what i said you should again search for what list class list class microsoft simply type list class microsoft this page will open on your google and then scroll down scroll down to the table where you will have methods okay so you have methods so the very first one itself add what is the definition when you use the method add that means adds an object to end of the list meaning is clear let's go back to the studio here i am writing add and the target object is list one now how do i pass the value always use the parameter click on the parameter and here i am passing the value 4 so do this on your yapa studio that's where you will have a complete understanding okay do this so you add it 4 so what would be the output of this if i ask you what would be the out output when i use a for each loop and run through the list and use a log message what would be the output will it be 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 3 2 1 4 what will be the output okay so looking looking at the data you should say so 1 2 3 is the primary data i am adding for so it should be 1 2 3 4 right so let's see that let's debug this 
so uh, if this kind of image based questions will be coming if you know how things function right and you should go through that uh, microsoft document okay to know few common uh, methods are you know look at go through that so this this will help you uh, any kind of method is used you get to know how how what would be the output okay so what is happening here look at the output panel one two three then it has added four getting it and execution completed so second example is clear let's move on to the third example okay so here again i am using a list class so let's go to the list class and i'm using a method name called add range what is the meaning of add range let's see that so here is something called add range method name add the element of the specified collection to the end of list that means list is a collection so list one i want to add another list two into that in the list one i would like to add one more list so last time i have added only one value one integer i have added here i want to add two list right so add range will be used add range methods okay like this you have to read this so, so, at least not everything you need to remember but few common things you should remember okay so let's go um, so i have used a add range look at the parameter value first let's look at the variable so i have created two list list one list two and the list one contains what one two three and the list uh, two contains what four five six okay so always remember target object means below that the other thing we are adding remember that okay uh, otherwise you, uh, you know they will alternatively options will be given and you might be confused what should be the right answer so target object is list one so list one contains one two three go to the parameter and what are list two i am adding which is four five six right i am passing it as a parameter okay so it will do the adding and once i added what would be the output of this one two three four five six right let's run it so do all this how i am doing no exactly you create and run it on your own you will have a complete understanding after you watch it okay so what should be the output look look at here how it is writing one it has written so it is writing from the list one because the target object will be first written okay one two three and then the target parameter will be added four has been added five and then six you can see the output is that clear one two three four five six should be your output okay so your understanding is required okay don't just uh, try to mug up and go okay your logical understanding is highly required because nobody knows what kind of questions would come but you, if your logic is clear you will be able to given any situation you will be able to understand evaluate and choose the right answer okay remember that sequence uh, so let's go for the next example so in this example i actually have two different examples okay four and five so in this one i am not using target object i am using the target type so what is the difference target object means is kind of a, we are using a variable into that right we are passing a variable and trying to do something with it but here we are not passing any variable in the target object section we are using a direct class for example here which class i have used system dot console so how do you find it go to browse for types okay and simply type system dot console so you have seen right sometime uh, in a in a message uh, in a assign activity if you write system dot console dot write line it will write so same thing we are utilizing okay console so this is what i am using okay console and if you hit on okay the system dot console will come clear so here for system dot console what method i should use again the same thing you have to do search in um, google what you will search tell me console class you will write console class list class microsoft console class like that you search you will find all this document i am also going to share all these links in the description okay in case you don't find you can use the description link console class so again scroll down look at the method go to the method 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 what is the method yeah method has come okay so here what i am trying to do right line right so let's scroll down right 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 okay so here you have something called right line character write the specified unicode character uh right line so right line is the one uh okay right uh, write the current line terminated to the standard output stream okay right line so this is the method i have to use so like that if you know few examples no it will it will become very easy so right line so what is the parameter i am passing here hello world okay that's all system dot console right line and i'm passing so what would be the output hello space world hello world hello 
space hello world space you can think of different options the output will be simply this one because this is what we are pass passing the same thing will be written hello world without any changes so if i execute this there are two activities actually but let's see i'll go to the next one also okay so you can see hello world the first look at the first one hello world has come okay for the first activity let's understand the second one in the second one what i am using the class i am using string class i am using so again go to google and uh, i'll pass all the links in the description uh, search for string class microsoft okay then you will get this document uh, scroll down uh, so what i am trying to do here uh, i want to concat okay i want to add two different words concat means adding right uh, hello and world i want to add let's say so for concatting what is the method i have to use you can search here so if you go to methods there should be something called concat okay concat Concatenates the string representation of two specified objects. If you want to do three, concatenates the string representation of three specified The same thing is that you have to pass three objects. Okay, method remains the same. Just try this out. Uh, try with three different uh, objects and see if th this is pulling. The so, how do you pass the value? First, you write select string here. So, you cannot say string. You can, uh, you can simply select here from string. Okay, string and then method you simply type concat. What you got it from the documentation. Uh, write concat. And then go to the parameters and here in the parameter i'm passing two different objects in first object i'm passing hello and the second object i'm passing world so what would happen hello and world get added so will there be any space hello space world or hello uh, comment comment it hello space world hello world or how it will come how the output would come so how the output would come because it's a concat there should not be any space okay let me run it and i'm passing see oh, okay, okay one more important thing i forgot okay so now uh, look at this what is happening in because it was a right line there was no output variable okay it was not passing any output um, so it has simply written but here when you are adding the output has to be passed to an argument okay so for that what you do go to the argument and simply say result you know argument you create create a variable any variable you want to create create a variable and direction is out because whatever the addition is going to happen in the invoke method that will get out right and it's a string type okay it's a string type so what i am doing the same result variable in the result property i'm mentioning so this also you understood what is that uh, usage of re result okay so you have added result here now let's say i'm going to the collection here i have added hello and wall that's it okay simple now the result i am trying to write it the output of uh, invoke uh, method is result i'm writing it here so how the output would come hello space world will come or hello world will come without space okay so if you know all this you know it will be easy for you to answer any questions around invoke method okay you can practice few more i have shown shown you you can practice few more methods uh, so output okay so what is the output this look at the second one okay for the second activity hello world without space so this should be your answer okay so practice this and be very comfortable about invoke method okay so invoke method we have learned so what you should do you should go back to your um, tracker and here you should uh, copy paste that okay it got closed uh, for me it got closed but again that was a simple one so copy paste the question and answer and what are the links you need okay these are the links you need so i will pass this link to you and once you complete mention in the comment that you have completed okay so the first link for the data table the second link is for the list um, you can also search for a couple of more classes if you need. Uh, and this is for console. So once you understood how things are fun functioning, it will be easy. So I will pass this in the description. Please copy all the links or yourself you can find it. Okay, system to string console collection data string also I passed right. Okay, so this is how you need to prepare. Okay, let's move on to our uh, next question. Thank you, guys.